Howdy folks. In this video, we're going to go over creating the infrastructure for a uh, Amazon Elastic Container Service with Terraform, and we will create an Eng Nginx and PHP application, or a very basic um, one with that. So what is ECS? It's um, Amazon's service to uh, deploy Docker containers easily, kind of a container orchestration service. You can think of it as like a Kubernetes, but it's a little scaled down version, a little bit simpler to use. Um, could be used good for like smaller, smaller apps if you don't need the uh, full fledged uh, Kubernetes. It'll work just fine. So in this, we're just going to deploy a very basic uh, PHP app on Engine X, and we're going to build everything out with um, Terraform. So let's get started. So I've got all my Terraform code uh, built out already. I am going to kind of just go through that. I'm not going to go and type, type everything out because they'll get a little tedious. You'll be able to view this. Um, it'll also be on a GitHub repo so you can see that. All right, so we're going to also, we're going to build out our Docker images as well. So it's going to be a good, good tutorial if you're, you know, not familiar with building out your own Docker images as well. So we're going to, we're going to do that. We're going to use, um, we're going to build a, a Docker Nginx um, image and a PHP image. They're going to be very basic. Uh, as you can see, let's just go and, and look through it. I'm not going to go over, the, go over everything about Docker, but um, you can see it's just very basic. I'm pulling, you know, the basic Nginx image already, and we're just doing a couple of things with that. And then in PHP, we are doing the same thing. We're just using the base image and, and just uh, setting a path here. And we're setting our, our application is just going to consist of this very basic PHP, just going to echo, hello, PHP is working. So we have that. Um, and we're going to use um, a, the AWS Elastic Container Repository for this. Sometimes you might use like the Docker registry, uh, but we're going to use the, the um, uh, built-in AWS registry to, to host this. So the one thing that you will need to do manually is build out your just set your, your repo, uh, your repository. So all you've got to do is go here, create repository. We're using private ones right now. Um, you could do public if you want, but I wanted to do private just to, you know, it's more stuff to learn. And, uh, most settings in the company, you would have private images anyway. So that's it. That's a good route to go. So we just did like will engine X. So I named mine that you can name yours, whatever. And then you just have to go create repository and you have your repositories here and that's all you have to do for now so the next spot is you're going to when I come here you're going to want to build out your build the images and i have a readme that you can use to um that's everything you need to do to build out the images i'm not going to build them out because i don't want to spend too much time on that it's not really what this thing is about it's about terraform so you're gonna you know Log in, this is kind of going to set your, uh, uh, your Docker login. Um, so you'll replace this here with your account ID. And then all you have to do is do Docker build X. Um, you just run this, replace your account number and image name with whatever you put in here. This will be your image name. And then we're setting platform here, which we'll, we'll set it to AMD 64. Um, I'm on a, Mac, which has ARM, the ARM chip. So you have to use, uh, like build X to kind of get this to work running on that. Unless I was to use, um, ARM, uh, instances in, on the, uh, ECS, but I'm not using ARM instances. I'm using Intel's, um, that. So if I was to use ARM, I wouldn't have to do, I wouldn't have to worry about that, but this actually kind of makes it easier. Um, so that will, this will actually push it to my repository here. So when I run this and I build it, it'll, it'll build, it'll build the Docker image, it'll tag it and it will push it all in one, one swoop, which is nice. So we've got that. Uh, you can run this command below to kind of force a new develop, a new deployment with ECS for kind of developing purposes. Uh, but now like, so we've got that. So let's just, let's go to our, our Terraform code. Cause this is kind of what this is all about here. Um, 
So I'm not going to go over everything, but you're going to have your basic stuff here. Um, you know, define a couple a local here with services, Nginx and PHP. Each Nginx and PHP will both be its own service. Um, with ECS, you can have different services, and then you can have containers within those services. And we are going to have one service with Nginx as a container and one service with PHP as a container. You could create one service and have a container of Nginx and a container of PHP in that service. And that's, that's probably a fine way to go. Um, with that, doing it that way, you can only scale that service that way. Whereas you have, if you have the separate services, you could scale Nginx a certain way and you could scale PHP a certain way. So it's kind of up to you on what your, your app would need, but we're going to do separate services between the two. Um, and here we're doing, we're just creating the cluster. Uh, the first thing on this, we're actually like, we're creating a VPC. We're using the VPC Terraform VPC module. As you can see here, we're just doing some basic stuff. Uh, you could play with this. This is just kind of what I'm putting here for now, just for testing. Um, uh, we actually wouldn't want the name to be this. We would want to use that as our like cluster name, VPC or something. Uh, let's, let's change this. So that's better. We don't want to have a hard coded value like that. Um, so we've got, we got variables. I'll show those in a sec, but the first thing is it's like kind of got a VPC. Um, then there's a dev.tf vars file. If you're not familiar with some of this Terraform stuff and like what dev.tf vars is, uh, go to some of my other videos where it goes over, uh, how, how variables work in Terraform and it'll kind of explain it. But I'm just going to find some variables here that I can use throughout the thing. And here I've defined my repository URL for my Nginx and PHP repo, which is right here again. Um, all right. So we've got that. So we've got the VPC. So let's go back to our main file. You can see I've got a few different files here. Um, but next we're going to create the task definition. Uh, we're setting the network mode. There's different network modes you can use. AWS VPC is, is fine for now for what we need. And you can set the uh, CPU memory set it to uh, four gigabytes here for memory using uh, Fargate capability. I will go over the execution role in just a sec. And then we're defining our, our container inside this task definition. And here we're, we're naming the container Nginx. This could be any name. And we are setting the image. This is our Docker image here. We're setting the image here to um, the image here we have here. So that's good. We're setting the CPU and memory here. Um, you see how we've set it here and here. Well, if we had multiple containers, the containers here could share the CPU and memory from that. So that's why you need to specify here. And then our port mappings, you know, that we're doing just eight port 80. We're just doing HTTP TTP. If you, on a real app, you're not going to just have that. You're going to have HTTPS. So you'd have 443 as here as well. And the log configuration here, this is very important. Um, this is going to hook up logs to CloudWatch and it'll make your life a thousand times easier because you can start debugging, um, different, different issues. Like, um, when I was building this up, it kept, I kept running into just weird issues where, you know, I had to enable logs to kind of figure out what was going on and, but it was able to tell me. So I'll, I'll show you that. Um, but definitely enable logs here and to enable logs, you're going to actually have to create a, where is it? Create a CloudWatch log group here, which is just one little thing, really simple. Um, and then let's go back to our main. So you got the log groups and then we're doing the same thing here. We've got the task definition of PHP. Um, we're kind of basically the same thing except for, um, it's just PHP. We saw, we have our logs and we're using our PHP image here now. So we've got that and we're going to set up a load balancer so we can just hit, hit a load balancer, which will then connect to our, um, our, uh, our containers. Um, but where did my, oh, there's my services. Okay. Um, so we've got our, our services here. 
so you, so essentially in ECS, you have your service and then you have pass definitions underneath that. Um, so here we got Nginx service. We're setting it to our cluster here and then a test definition. Um, we're going to use Fargate and our desired count is going to be, you know, we can set that to five if we want five instances or not. Um, we're forcing a new deployment. Uh, so when we try to make changes, it'll try to force some deployment. And here is just some basic um, networking things. So this can get a little tricky. I have, I have a thing for security groups here, uh, but you need to make sure that you have the, these correct um, so your containers can talk to each other. And we're actually going to use service discovery to do that, which I will show you in a sec. Um, then we got a load balancer. We're, we're specifying which load balancer um, we're using, or it's actually the, the target group of the load balancer. And we're just using port 80. And then we use a service registry, which we've defined here. Uh, then we've got a PHP service, pretty much uh, almost the same thing. We don't, we don't have a load balancer on the PHP service because the load balancer is going to hit Nginx, which then Nginx is going to proxy over to, um, to PHP. So we don't need to have um, the load balancer on PHP because Nginx will be what calls our PHP. So then we got a load balancer here, just very basic load balancer. We're using an application load balancer. We get our subnets from the, the modules we created from, or the VPC we created earlier. And then we set a target group and a listener on here um, as well. Uh, the service discovery, that this basically allows you to easily talk between um, containers uh, on ECS. So as you can see here, we've got the name of PHP FPM and Nginx, and then we've got the name of app.local. So what you can do here is app.local is like a, the DNS name, essentially. So if you look at our, we go to our Nginx config that we've created here. Where is it? You can see we're actually using PHP FPM .app.local. And this, this right here will map to this name, PHP FPM here, this name, and then this name, this app.local. So that's what this maps to. And to get to that, you are going to, we are using our, our service discoveries here, which are applied to our ECS service. So let's kind of connect, connect to that. Um, let's see what else we got our AIM or IAMs. So these are just different permissions you need for the execution role to allow, um, certain things for ECS. So we have that, and then we have specific logging set up, logging, um, I am set up because we need to allow our containers to talk to CloudWatch to be able to send the logs to CloudWatch. We've got that. So then we've just got some basic variables we've defined here. Um, and that's about it. So I've, oh, we've got auto scaling too. Don't forget about that. So I've got auto scaling set up. Um, so we're using the AWS app auto scaling. So this will basically, what this does is you know, if the CPU gets to 80, it will, uh, give it more, more instances. Um, we have a max capacity of 10. Um, and then once it, you know, gets back down lower, it'll, it'll reduce those instances. So, and it's also got a cooldown period of 300 seconds, which is five minutes, which will, you know, if the CPU goes to like 85 and it goes to 75 and it goes to 85, like in a quick, like a one a minute, two, two minute spans it will um uh it won't just jump back and forth like zigzag it'll it'll give it like once it hits 80 it'll run for three at least five minutes and then it'll check again and it won't scale down like won't scale down and up like really fast so that's what's doing that um so let's go into so i've already built this app all you have to do is do terraform apply um i think i have the commands in here let's look at the preview So Terraform apply, I actually need to update this to add Terraform apply dash, uh, uh, var file, was it TFRs? Um, 
dev.tf bars. Just need to add that. All right, so we've got that built out. Um, so let's let's go look at it real quick. Classic container service. Uh, so we've got, you know, here's our cluster. This is our cluster here, we'll test. And then we've got, you know, different services. Here's a PHP service, our Nginx service. So if you dive into those, you can kind of see the help of it. Um, you can see the, the, the one that's helpful here is logs. So you can kind of see like, you know, if you have errors, they're kind of going to be showing here. So this is very helpful here to look at that if you run into issues while you deploy it. Um, these will be uh, different tasks. We've got each deployment. You might have more than one of these if you've done it more than one time. Let's see. So let's go back here. Yeah, so you can see each task right here. And then you can see, you can see that there's one container running. So on this, this task, there's, there's only one container running, but you could have multiple containers right here. So if we scale that, you know, desired, um, if there's auto scaling or what right now, this would have more than one, um, container. Uh, and then, um, let's see. So you can see our task definitions here. That, so then let's go to our load balancer that we created. We're going to go over the EC2 load balancer, and we're going to copy this DNS name. So now, since we, we built this, let's copy this and it should bring up our app. Right, so now it says, hello, PHP is working, which is good because that's what we had in this um, PHP file here. So perfect, so that is working. So let's also look at, let's look at the logs. Let's go to CloudWatch and let's see, um, go to log groups. Let's, we named it will test. So it's ECS will test and that's where we named it Name it in our var file here, logs, ECS will test. So that's where that, that name comes from. Um, so you can see here, it's like an Nginx, so it's PHP. Um, you know, when I was debugging this, I couldn't get, I wasn't able to get the um, containers to talk to, to each other initially. So, you know, I was getting, instead of these 200 success here, I was getting like 404s, couldn't reach it. And it took, it took me a little bit. Um, but you can see everything is kind of working, but these, these logs are very helpful when, when trying to debug this stuff, I can't stress that enough to make sure you en enable the logs to, to have that. Um, but this is all pretty much it. I am going to, uh, put a link to this in the, for the GitHub repo, cause there'll be a GitHub repo of this whole code. So you can kind of check this out if you need to. Um, and that's, that's about it. Uh, don't forget to, um, hit like and subscribe if you found this con content useful and I will talk to you later.